All right, hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Bottom Line. I'm CJ Wilson with Stephen Leclerc, and uh, we have, of course, Josh O. Fact checking in the background. And today's guest is uh, Desiree Dickerson, who is experienced in the in the Bitcoin space in a non traditional way. She's coming from Lightning Labs and now is at Thunder Games. So, uh, Des, welcome to the Bitcoin Bottom Line, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I didn't know Josh was going to be fact checking checking. <laughs> <laughs> that's frightening verify but, uh, verify don't trust even on even on a podcast i guess that's the thing so, yeah that's, that's right that's we, for sure. <laughs> so um so all of our backgrounds are very different right my background professional sports small business owner now i'm a bitcoin hodler and a podcaster just like everybody else uh steven's tradfi des you're in bitcoin gaming which is like i would say a very pointy end of the spectrum, right? Considering so many other people are looking at Bitcoin as an investment or Bitcoin as a, uh, a vault or a payment layer or something like that. Tell us a little bit about gaming and Bitcoin gaming and how, how Thunder Games works. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, you know, I will say my background, I have a very similar background to Josh, actually. Um, you know, I was, you know, my academic background is in the sciences. So it's like super funny to see so many people kind of uh, with, such different like origin stories but anyways yeah with gaming um you know i i do see you know especially being you know in wyoming um when we were at the bitcoin ski summit and just seeing so many people who are in mining which is just you know such a not a foreign concept to me but it's just like at such a different scale and i feel like what i'm doing is just like so small and minute but like i still feel very very important um and you know the gaming piece i think it's just one thing that like is really important for bitcoin adoption and you know someone before we started had mentioned like you know bitcoin is so unapproachable like it's scary you know people hear obviously all the fud around everything and um you know it's just not easy still to this day it's just not really easy and um you know coming from um you know a perspective of you know how do we get people actually using bitcoin it's like you know, these conversations about mining are obviously over most people's heads, but if it's as simple as, okay, this is literally a currency that you're winning in a game and, but it has real world value, right? It might be a tiny bit, but it is more than winning nothing. And people are usually just curious enough that they're like, hey, if I get Bitcoin for free, then you know, that's cool. I'll try it out. So what we see is a lot of people, you know, come to our games, they find our games in the app store, a friend shows it to them and they're not Bitcoiners. They've never, you know, they know obviously what Bitcoin is, but they've never bought any, they, they don't really follow it, but they're like, okay, cool. I'll just download it from the app store. They go, they just play the game and Hey, like at the end of the day, they may have a hundred sats and they're like, Oh, Hey, now I have, now I have Bitcoin. Now, when they have Bitcoin, now they have some skin in the game. So then they go and they download um, a, a lightning enabled wallet and they have some type of incentive to actually become a Bitcoiner. So, so many of our users, what we hear all the time is like, this is their first introduction to Bitcoin. And as soon as they had those stats, they're like, okay, now I need to learn more because I have it. So rather than, you know, expecting people to just come to Bitcoin and be like, yay, I want to be self-sovereign and, you know, out of like, you know, most people don't have that need or that necessity. It's, you know, they just don't really have the time or care that much. But if they already have it in their hands, it's like, okay. It's like if someone handed you like a puppy and like ran, you'd be like, okay, I need to like take care of this puppy and feed it and at least like find it a new home, right? So once someone hands it to you, then you're really, really incentivized to do something with it. And it usually leads to like people downloading a wallet. It's usually a custodial wallet, but you know, our kind of flow through the games, we try and introduce people to like how to be totally self-sovereign and, you know, eventually like go totally non-custodial. So we're really about being at the beginning of everyone's Bitcoin journey um, and really reaching like new audiences. Mobile games are obviously like big with so many different demographics outside of like what traditional games are. So I think there's just a ton of potential for like reaching new people and making those new people Bitcoiners. Well, one of the things that I found out with, so I have children and uh, I, 
gave them Bitcoin as part of their allowance and, and, and they're required to do things for their allowance. I don't just give them money. You know, they they have to actually work, you know, mow the yard, uh, pick up the trash, sweep the porch, things like that. And when I gave it to them as a portion of their allowance, I don't think they appreciated it as much, even though they were earning it. Um, until one of my, one of my children, he had a bunch of money and he was like, Hey dad, I got $600. Um, I want to put $300 into Legos and $300 into Bitcoin. And I was like, okay, cool. So he, we, 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 we took it, we bought Bitcoin, it doubled. And he's like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm so like, he, you know, just thought he was like the, like the coolest trader of all time, you know, playing with his Legos, got all of his money back, has Bitcoin. And then every time he gets birthday money now, he goes, here, here's some, here's some money, dad, go buy me some Bitcoin. He just kind of like throws money at me. Um, so I, I think there's a difference between giving away Bitcoin, earning it through your allowance because you never see it anyway, but then actually putting your own money into it. So how do you guys, how do you guys differentiate that within, within a game? And, 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 and do you think that there's lo- different levels of appreciation based on what you're seeing as feedback within the game? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's, you know, you know, actually having to, you know, put in some of your own work or some of your own funds, obviously, yeah, it does, you know, incentivize people to like really care about um, the asset. But, um, you know, that's not something, I mean, I think that's really interesting right now, um, you know, we are just doing, you know, you are playing to earn. Um, you can, we are working on setting it up where you can buy in-game assets with Bitcoin. Um, so that's obviously, there's so much friction with that because you have to go to a different website. Um, you can't just do the whole like flow through the app store and Google play. So there is friction there um, that like they opened up the regulations basically so, to allow you to go to another website purchase something with cryptocurrency and then the asset or the in-game asset shows up in the game. Um, I mean, that's something we're experimenting with now, like, but who knows like how much demand there will be. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's like an interesting, you know, problem. Like we aren't, you know, I don't foresee like a ton of our users doing that, but you never know. Um, I, I think that's just like one part of it that, we're not really focusing on right now is, you know, having people like put their own money on the line in order to kind of have that side of the skin in the game coin, I I guess I would say. Yeah. Yeah, The thing, the thing that's interesting for me is like, you know, I was a super heavy gamer as a kid. And as I, as I got older, um, you know, the goal was more instead of like beating the game itself, it was more like beating the other people at the game. And I think we've seen like network gaming now grow so much in the last 15 or 20 years. Um, with mobile gaming, how much, uh, how much are you guys focused on sort of the one player experience versus the multiplayer experience? And then like, do you see different layers of that uh, adding more interest at different age groups? And, and like, do you have an idea of the age groups of the typical people that you guys are kind of in, onboarding? Yeah, those are great questions. Um, so one, right now we are focused, right now our games are, as they stand, all single player, but um, most of them um, it, with further updates will have like multiplayer, like um, P2P type of games um, and or aspects of the games. And, you know, that's something that we, really see a lot of engagement with is these what we call casual esports um you know one thing that we hear so much in the the community of like you know gaming and just esports in general is you know it is like i mean you get it cj like with sports it's like there's only the elite few who like make money and compete at that level um but you know having a asset that's like so divisible allows like for more equitable play in these esports events. So we host one like an event like every weekend, if not every other weekend, and people just come and play. And right now it's just leaderboards, like who is winning. And we have tons and tons of people join and they absolutely love it. We have larger like prize pools, obviously for the top 10, but at the end of the day, pretty much everyone is winning, whether that be like one Satoshi, literally we give out one Satoshi as prizes and, and people love it. That's actually our 
top prize. There's like a badge for like one sat gang. They like love it. Um, so um, yeah, that is like one thing that we're really thinking about is like the whole multiplayer thing. Um, I think, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the company Skills, who does a lot of publishing and they do um, a ton of kind of casual esports or, you know, competitive gaming within their kind of app ecosystem. And um, that's something that we're playing around with too. One thing that I'm like super, super excited about is wagering. So if, uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw, but we announced a like collaboration slash partnership with Sherdbits to do um, sports betting at the Bitcoin conference in Miami on discrete, like using discrete logged contracts. And so that's just kind of like the first step in like kind of a collaboration that we're doing. And, you know, we would love to like add wagering. I mean, this is like a whole very, very long process that it will take with lots of legal fees, I'm sure um, to kind of get to the point where, you know, you can actually have not only like multiplayer or, you know, player versus player gaming, but also, um, you know, add that like wagering um, component as well, which is very, very popular in gaming. And then to answer kind of the demographic um, question, it's really interesting, um, you know, f right now, I mean, traditionally, it's always like young white boys who play games, which, you know, that's just how it's been. And I think mobile has really changed what those demographics look like right now the one of the fastest growing demographics in mobile gaming is women between the ages of 35 and 50 which uh, you know is surprising but like think about how many people you know who are playing like candy crush and like these detective games and merge mansions um you know like my mom is playing um is playing mobile games like even before i started this job and so um you know i think it's really interesting to see like that like you know those people who are playing and then also just emerging markets like Karina's free fire um is just hugely pop popular in latin america especially um el salvador and so you know there's not this huge barrier to entry to game anymore you don't have to buy you know a multi hundred dollar console and pay all this money just for one game um you can just really have a smartphone and play almost any game in in the app store and so that brings that brings these games to a lot more demographics so um you know we are seeing right now we have a ton of bitcoiners um very clearly who are playing our games but our tar target demographic for um our last two games were you know between the ages i would say you know like 20 30 ish and um more kind of female um leaning but you know that's just like what we're seeing right now um and i think that you know that age gro group is like really good for us because it does overlap with like some interest in bitcoin and whatnot but yeah it, it's really interesting and i think you know if we can use mobile games to reach those new demographics then um you know that's who we also want to bring Bitcoin too. We don't want to just bring Bitcoin to all the same people. So if we can reach these emerging markets and, you know, women and, you know, people who are a little bit older as well, I think it's like, just like a huge win um, for yeah. everyone. It's it's funny because as you're saying this, like my, my perception of mobile gaming is like people playing, you know, like Zelda type games, right? Where you're like a one player on a quest, unlocking things. I'm going way back to the Nintendo days back when, in the 80s, but it's basically like, you know, you, you can only have so many controls. Obviously, you gyroscopically, you can move the controller around. But then I think about all the time that I spent playing Words with Friends, all the time people sp spent playing Wordle, people do chess, you know, things like that. So there's like all these layers to games that are, some of them are, let's say, demographically going to be more pausable, you know. And what I mean by that is like literally you can pause it. So if you're if you're a mom and you're at home and you put your kid to bed and you're like, cool, now I can play Candy Crush or whatever for 30 minutes. The, the the mom version, the stay at home mom version of that mobile gaming through through you guys, it can be like a completely fascinating demographic that has way more potential and was way easier to onboard people than saying, oh, hey, go to this exchange like Binance or something or Kraken and like try to buy Bitcoin. Right. And like watch the charts at the one minute level go go crazy and then try to buy and sell. I think it's, it's such a cooler way of onboarding people and sort of like a slower like lean into it 
to say, hey, check it out. You could win this game in a couple of sats. And people are like, what are sats? And you're like, oh, here you go. And then click mm-hmm. on this link and we'll explain this. And then click on this other link. And then here's a story from whoever. I think this is how we get the boomers, honestly. Like the boomers need this. Like we get crossword puzzles on Thunder Games and like all of a sudden – you know, like, can you solve these crossword puzzles or pay, play like Boggle or whatever these like sort of like, you know, boomer games. And then all of a sudden I, I'm totally bullish now. This is like got me all fire. I'm like, ting- I'm tingling now because I hadn't really thought about it before because it's always been like I played <laughs> Halo and shooting games and racing games and stuff that you did need a controller. You did need a big TV because you got to zoom in and no scope people on like Fortnite or whatever. But now I'm sitting here thinking, damn, I could be- I could have been playing words with friends for money this whole time. You know, it's crazy. Or, and I would have well, smashed people. It would have been great. Well, that's the thing, too. You know, you know, the, the, the kids nowadays, they call it the grind, right? It used to be called yeah. you know, back in the days of World of Warcraft. Um, and I'm, I'm showing my age. You know, it was we, we called it mining for gold. Right. You would you would you would just grind all day long to earn to earn items that you can sell to other people. Right. Now the kids call it the grind. But what you talked about on casual games is really interesting. So, uh, you know. I left traditional finance for about a year and a half, a long time ago, um, also showing my age, back, back in 2007, and joined uh, Electronic Arts uh, for, for, for a period of time before I went back to traditional finance. And one of the interesting things that was happening during that period of time, it was, uh, it was 07 through a little bit of 08, is they noticed that uh, you know the casual gaming market was this massive market. So they did a couple of acquisitions. One was uh, Pogo, if you remember, remember that kind of online casual game company. And they even created a whole casual game unit. So you had EA Sports, you had EA Casual. And at that period of time, the highest grossing game of all time was Sims, which was, which was oh. also an EA game. And, and so, so they saw that, that trend beginning to happen in, in casual. And now today it's massive, just like you said. But if you can get, you know, if, if, if you can get boomers to to just grind on cross, crossroad puzzles to earn Bitcoin, um, I mean, talk about talk about mass adoption. Uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic reward system. We're talking about mass adoption. That's what this is, because it's like mass adoption. Ty- yeah, like the typical thing is like you go to onboard somebody and you're like, hey, read this 300 page book right? Read about how the money system is broken. Hey, read about this thing. Watch this video from, you know, Sailor and Ross Stevens talking about like graduate level economics that, that to be honest with you, most people don't get, which is why they, I mean, frankly, this is, I don't hope, I don't want to be too partisan, but the reason why the politicians don't get a lot of things, why they keep screwing things up is because we don't get it. So we vote them in. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. So whereas like through gaming, it's such a softer, like, gradual thing and, and to have sats as a standard really starting at that bottom of divisibility and saying okay we're going to take all the way down to the bottom instead of point zero 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 whatever it's going to be like hey you just earned 14 sats like congratulations because you speed played this level or you did this this wordle really fast or something like that i just think that i've been thinking about mobile gaming all wrong and i just want to admit it here on to all of our audience i i, really I do. mean I will jump in there with you because here's the thing. I did not like mobile games. Like, to be honest, like I still prefer to play my switch and that's just like my style of game. And you know, that's fine. But like when I started looking, when I was considering this, I was like, okay, mobile games really like I played insane aquarium. Like that was the only game I really liked. And then I like looked into it. It was like 60% of the entire gaming market is mobile games and it's only growing so it's like like you said if this is how we can reach mass adoption i think it's i think one of the most popular games in the app store right now like pretty pretty high is solitaire which is like and we all used to play that on our computer right and so it's like should i download the solitaire game that is just whatever and you watch ads and you do the thing and sure you get some like relaxation you get like the pure joy of play out of it but if you can do that same exact thing but win bitcoin like what are you going to do right it's like even if you don't care about bitcoin even if you like hate bitcoin why would you just not try that so i mean i think it's just like such an easy an easy thing for people to do rather than being like okay let me go like download the coinbase app sell my soul 
sacrifice my firstborn and <laughs> then I get some Bitcoin. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So and sort through yeah. the field, sort through the field of toxicity on, on Bitcoin Twitter and all that other <laughs> stuff and then figure out. Yeah, it's just it, it's just funny. That's just really funny. I guess the thing is, too, like, you know, sports gaming is a big deal. Right. Uh, as we've seen over the last couple of years. They even have, I was, I was at a barbecue place locally the other day. I mean, they're eating, you know, I'm on my carnivore diet. I'm eating my, you know, my brisket and my tri-tip and my ribs or whatever for lunch. And I look up and ESPN has a whole show on sports betting, a whole show talking about odds making. Oh, hey, what are the odds that this guy wins the American League MVP? What are the odds that this guy scores 30 points? What are the odds that this guy makes more than three three-pointers in a game? And they're going through this with all these different hosts and all these different sports and all this stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking... This is this is like not the same as it was 10 years ago, right? Like we've really evolved. And now the the I would say the embracing of sports betting uh, it nationally and obviously internationally, but really yeah, as Americans nationally has been this really big transition in sports mm-hmm. to the point that it's on ESPN broad daylight at like two o'clock in the afternoon. So I think like I think the question is for me, because a lot of people bet on football, they play fantasy football, stuff like that. Um at what dollar value does it become, you know, like the high st- the stakes crank up a little bit and then it kind of has diminishing returns? Because you would think of like these people that are like sports bettors or like poker players or whatever, and they might be like maybe irresponsible with the amount of money that they're wagering or whatever. So I guess with sats, you can kind of work your way into it. And then do you guys see that there's a sort of like a regulatory thing or something like that? where the stakes get high enough and then you have to get new licenses or something. This, how does that work? Yeah, I'm like navigating a lot of this from the beginning because one, I am not personally really into sports betting at all. And I don't even gamble when I go to Vegas. I don't find it fun. But my father and my whole entire family are like the craziest sports bettors of all time. I don't know what they're <laughs> talking about. They're always screaming. And they're just so passionate about it. And so I, you know, being at home, I'm from Ohio. So like my dad's like betting on the Browns and I'm like, literally why? And he, I'm just like, there's just so much demand for this weird sports betting stuff. So I started learning more about it. And I was like, you're paying what? You're literally paying what to these like bookies? I was like, this was like 10% on both sides. I was like, that is absolutely insane. And so and when I started hearing about like what, um, Chris at Shirt Bits was was talking about was like oh my god like people are all you know there's a growing demand for um, you know sports betting and esports and I was like why would you just not do this on like Bitcoin or virtual currency for virtual gaming and then you totally undercut like there's no real need for a bookie of course you need an oracle but like you can totally you know reduce those costs everyone's going to come to it. And then again, yeah, like everyone can participate. Like you can, um, you know, at the conference we have just, we do have like a max amount, which is like a hundred thousand sats just because the tech is still very new, but it's like, yeah, I mean, you could wager 10 sats, you know, you just get on your umbral node and, you know, I've done it myself. Like I'm not super technically inclined, but um, the potential is there. So I do think too, like maybe for better or for, or worse, it does um, kind of open up the potential for more people to participate in sports betting because you can do so in these like lower denominations and bet for like less than a penny, which is just crazy to even think about and literally pays very few fees and it settles instantly. So um, there's a ton of potential there. That's that's yeah, amazing. I think I think you have to kind of differentiate between like what's kid friendly mobile gaming and what's adult friendly <laughs> mobile gaming, right? So there's maybe some sort of KYC to that degree, because otherwise you'd have some 13 year old DGen going like, oh, man, I got to get a thousand on the Browns today, you know, and that's like maybe not what we're trying to encourage. But but just the just the ability to onboard like people through totally not financial, non-toxic, you know, where they don't have to watch like the crypto Bitcoin debate at all. They just they just get right into sats right out of the gate. It's just, I, I need a, I need a second to just, just process this. This is like, <laughs> it's really funny for me. I have so many. Well, let me ask you this. Are, are you guys going to have any kind of setup at uh, Bitcoin 2022 or uh, any kind of game set up there? Um, yes. So we are very small still, and, you know, we have a very minute marketing budget, but I um, mean, you know, the conference has been 
pretty wonderful and you know allowed us to set up a table so we will have all of our games demoed there and we haven't like announced it we're announcing it next week but it's totally live so if you have the bitcoin 2022 app um you can actually there's a games tab and you can just like go to the games tab and um, like we've kind of like done that entire part of the app and you can find all of our games you can also find information on um the um esports e betting stuff so if you go there there will also um during the conference there will be a kind of running um a running ledger of all of the bets that are being placed at the event um so there's they're going to do like um i don't know which they haven't told me yet but they're um they're doing esports um like tournament for some triple a games i'm not sure which ones and they have bringing in collegiate teams so you can actually come we have a separate table set up for that where you can kind of come and place bets and demo the tech and see what is kind of going on um, with that so yeah we will have like two little tables there oh that's amazing so my, my my 12 year old who's 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 my my bitcoin trader um he asked me uh, about a month ago he said hey dad um can I skip school and go to the Bitcoin conference? <laughs> I was like, I was like, why? He goes, he goes, I just want to learn how to make money. And they're not teaching that in school, but I'm going to learn that <laughs> at the Bitcoin conference. And I was like, yeah. done, you're, you're going. That's so awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to bring him by and he's going to, he's, he'll be the judge if your games are fun or not. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put him in there. He's going to play a couple of the games and you'll say, yeah, dad, they're fun. Or he'll be like, eh, I'd rather play Minecraft, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He will. I mean, he will be a harsh critic. So, you know, we do have, we're still new. So like, I mean, some people find the games fun, you know, I don't play them hardcore, but um, you know, they are, they are hyper casual. So very different from Minecraft, but would love to get his feedback and you know, hook him up with some like stickers and fun stuff too. So. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. You know, St Steven, maybe we can do like a little mini tournament to see who's the best. Cause you know, so does, I don't know if you, you know this, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but, but Steven is pretty competitive to the point that like the majority of people that he tries to employ are all like giants. And it's, he tries to be like the, he tries to put together the most intimidating height team. So everybody that works for Valkyrie is like six foot three plus, right? I'm like the shortest person, like Leah, Leah and I are like the shortest two people in the booth last year. I remember that. And everyone else is like six, five, like six, three, six, <laughs> seven, six, seven. How tall is Sean? Six, seven. So oh six, nine, six, Sean, nine. Six, yeah. Nine. So anyways, so it'd be really funny. How tall are you, Josh? Uh, six, two. Oh man. Hey, he's you're, pretty you're fact tall. check. Fact how, check. How, six, how did two. you get past, how'd you get past the interview process? I don't know. I don't know. It was on zoom. It was on zoom. So he couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So the, the thing that I'm thinking is it'd be fun to see like, uh, if, if we, if we can develop our own little high score internally for everybody that's going to be doing Bitcoin bottom line podcasts and stuff, maybe we have them like as an interim, we pick a couple games and we have them see who can get the highest scores, you know, and, and who can get the, the, the best, have the, have the, the best like leadership. We should get a little prize for them or something like that. Yes. You know? Okay. I have the game for you guys. Um, the game we just came out with, which is really like my attempt. I, I really wanted this game because it's like to get people to play all of our games. Like what's the easiest, like most OG game that everybody will download. Obviously, literally the og mobile game which is snake so um we do have snake where you can win bitcoin it's like the old nokia style um so that would be a good one it is too it is really fun it's just it's literally exactly like the old snake um and before you begin we are changing because you're all tall so like i'm assuming you're just like large humans so um we are changing the controls, the control pad on it, because we actually optimized that for my hand. <laughs> and, you know, so we're doing, yeah. So a lot of people complain about the controls being too small. So we are doing like actually a lot of user research into what the controls should look like, but start with that game and let's see what your guys' high scores are. All right, that's good. good. I like that as a, as, a, as a measuring tool, you gotta get over this score, otherwise you're irrelevant. <laughs> on the uh on the on the podcast circuit um yeah so uh, don't last worry cj by the way if, if i beat you in the video games I i'll still admit that you're a better baseball player than me that's yeah i mean listen i'm gonna throw this out there in 1988 and 1989 i was actually in nintendo power magazine for my high scores on tetris and excitebike 
So just throwing that out there. Okay. Uh, NBD, that's badass. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I used to host video game tournaments um, for my charity back in the day. And um, we did, we started with uh, Guitar Hero. And then we did, um, then we had performance based uh, rock band. And then we also did uh, Halo uh, two on two tournaments. Uh, through, through my charity back in the day. Um, we disbanded the Halo tournaments after it was deemed like unbeatable because we'd have like these four guys, like these two, like one was a set of twin brothers and then the other one was like these two professional gamers that would show up and just destroy everybody. And it was demoralizing. So then we went to bowling tournaments after that because it's like we just pushed the envelope too far. Um, but I've always been a big gamer. Um, I'm My wife thinks gaming is bad. I think gaming is amazing. It keeps you out of trouble. You know, but I think there's definitely a middle ground there where some people do get addicted to games and they don't understand how to like pull back into reality. Um, Bitcoin makes reality better because if you have more Bitcoin, then you're generally a happier person. I think at least, you know, that's the way I look at it. But um, that's my argument, at least for, for trying to get my kids into it. Source confirmed. If you have more Bitcoin, you're a happier person. Sources. Um, Breaking news. Yeah. Breaking news. Sources. Yeah. So, um, Des, I guess, okay, so, so our, our action item checklist is we got to download Snake. We got we to gotta practice. We have, about, we have a couple days before the, the conference starts. I have to beat Steven and his, and his child uh, <laughs> straight up. And because, uh, Steven, there's no chance your son's ever played Snake. Okay, zero chance. It's too antique. It's like Tetris. Like he hasn't seen it before. You know yeah, I mean? it's using a dial phone. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I guess we will be there. We'll all see you there, Des. And, uh, cool. thanks for everything you do for Bitcoin. And you're in a tough town too, being in DC. I've seen you a couple times out there when I'm on my circuit, you know, talking to the, the boomer congressman and stuff, but I think I'm going to try to go in there with snake. Now I have another tool and I can show yeah. them how they can like kill time and earn Bitcoin. And then it's like, that's the super slow orange pill knife that we're going to just turn <laughs> into them. You know? <laughs> Maybe exactly. you introduce the game to Brad Sherman. Maybe he'll become a Bitcoiner. We'll just tell him. We won't tell him what's, that Satoshi's and and are are a divisible unit of Bitcoin because there's no chance he actually knows that. That'll be the best part. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, love it. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on the Bitcoin Bottom Line. I think that about wraps it up. We will be uh, doing more research as we always do. And uh, Josh, uh, keep fact checking us from the background. And even though you're not six foot six like Steven is, we're still, I'm still, you're still taller than me. I'm only six one. So there you go. All right. See everybody in Miami. Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Des.